Hello and welcome to another episode. This is a 2016 Nissan Leaf that we collected from auction. It needs a service, so today I'm going to show you exactly what we do. Please remember to check out our other videos and to click on the subscribe button and tap on the bell icon so you get notifications each time we upload another video. So straight into it and here I'm checking that both key fobs work, if not I'd renew the batteries. It's also worth trying the emergency keys in the door barrel. Rare but not unheard of, do the front and rear number plates match? I'll take a walk around the car looking for damage. As you can see here, the offside front fog lamp is insecure. This is common and normally an easy fix. Check both mirrors are secure and also the door chromes. This is another common issue on the leaf, but nothing that can't be sorted with a hot glue gun. I've been caught out by this at a car wash, which left me with a dirty roof. A quick squirt of lubricant in here will ensure the next owner doesn't have the same issue. Onto the wipers and the rear is split. It's not an MOT failure, but we'll change it anyway. Two minutes and done. A quick check on the fronts and these Bosch arrows will be fine for another year. To re-secure the fog lamp, you'll need to get your arm behind the wheel arch liner. This can be tricky and may leave you with a few scratches. Now I'm checking all the lights which in this case are all working. Remember to check the number plate lights though, as these are often missed. Next I'm lubricating and there's lots to do. Latches, hinges, check straps, rams, ball joints, more latches and more hinges. The leaf bonnets have a habit of staying up on their own and this is no exception. But after greasing, working it up and down for a minute will normally rectify this. In the boot, I'll do a quick visual of the charge cables, looking for corrosion and damage. I'm also checking the compressor is present and the emergency inflation kit are all there. There is another common issue, where the grab handles are fitted upside down. I've no idea why, but it's easily sorted. Inside the leaf, I'm checking the seats are secure and the slide and lock mechanism works okay. The seat belts are in good condition and they latch and retract correctly and the rear bench locks in fully. Now I'm checking the interior controls and making sure that air conditioning and heater are working. The steering column rake adjustment and all the stalks operate as they should. You can see the wipers are clearing the glass really well. Now I'm doing a quick check of the pedal rubbers, checking for excessive brake pedal travel and looking for reserve travel on the foot brake. Again, everything feels okay to me. Next we're onto the pollen filter, which can be accessed easily if you remove the glove compartment, but I prefer to use the access port, it's quicker. We're gonna replace this paper filter with a carbon filter and that'll just give slightly better air quality in the cabin. Under the bonnet, I'm initially checking the HV wiring for security and signs of damage. The leaf rarely suffers any issues here, although there are some H-fills on the rear of the PDM that occasionally cause problems. But not today on this leaf. A quick check of the 12 volt battery shows it's in good condition and quite possibly be the original. I'm now checking the antifreeze. We're on a bit of a tilt here, but a quick check with the hydrometer shows the mixture to be exactly correct. Before I can check the brake fluid, I'm looking at the brake booster under pressure for leaks and security, and it's all good. The level is okay, and with the gauze removed, we can test the water content. It's showing less than 1% moisture content, which is well within specification, and will be okay for many years yet. Next is the screen wash, which we use a tablet additive for, and they work really well. The Leaf does have a flawed design, which is the same on their latest 2022 model. The driver's wiper spindle drops water directly onto the offside strut top and causes it to rust, as seen here. 
A quick clean up with a wire brush makes it look a whole lot better. Add some PTFE spray and a strut top cover and the issue is completely resolved. We do this on both sides. We now add battery terminal spray protector to the negative and positive and earth points around the engine bay. Some of these are very well hidden. Next, it's the reduction gear oil, which has a service life of 60,000 miles. The 22s and 30s seem okay, but the 40s onwards do seem to have heavier wear issues. As you can see, the plug magnet is fine, and with a quick wipe clean, we can refit it. That's it under here, bonnet down and onto the wheels. I always loosen the wheel nuts before jacking up the car and being on a small slope, I'll make sure we have a chock under one of the rear wheels. The handbrake is off and it's in park. Once in the air, I can buzz the nuts off and remove the wheel, allowing me to inspect the tread area and tyre condition. Although old and slightly cracked, it's on three millimetres, so completely legal. But all of the tyres are well under pressure. Next I'm checking the bottom arm bushes. These do crack and occasionally push through the arm itself. Now I'm looking for lift in the bottom ball joint, play in the track rod end and play in the anti-roll bar drop link, but it's all good. I'm now feeling the coil spring, looking for cracks and broken metal and examining the shock absorber and brake lines, looking for signs of leakage, but there's nothing, so I'm happy. Also, this angle allows me to inspect the inner CV gator steering rack gator and the HV wiring that runs between the traction battery and the PDM and this all looks good too. Now I'm on the brakes. First of all the hubs need a brush up. I'm not a fan of copper grease, it gets everywhere and I much prefer this method. I remove the M8 nut from the base of the caliper and this allows me to access the front pads. These are in particularly good condition and clearly not seized but you need to strip them to find this out so we'll carry out our normal cleaning and greasing of the pads. The leaf suffers with corrosion on the inside face of the discs, but these are fine. So I cleaned out the pad wells, clean the pads themselves and give them a good inspection. I'm now applying ceramic brake grease, designed for exactly this, which will stop the pads seizing over time and make sure the brakes wear evenly and perform properly when needed. The sliders also get the same treatment as these have a tendency to seize up too. Just remember to wipe off the excess. That's it, we can refit the pads and they slot in very nicely as you can see. I now pull the caliper down and refit the M8 nut and pop the wheel back on. Under normal circumstances without filming, each wheel would take approximately 20 minutes. Now we're onto the back wheels and here we often find the rear brake lines covered in mud and often much worse than this. There's four joints in the line that we clean up and treat as these disappear over the battery and aren't something we want to replace. Again, it's much the same on the rear brakes as the front. The outer pads come out relatively easily, but unsurprisingly, the inner pad after 26,000 miles has started to seize and needs a couple of taps to knock it free. I clean up the fitting kit with the wire brush and then use the drill for the pad wells and I'm taking the corrosion off the pads with an angle grinder. The grinder is fitted with a sanding disc as we don't want to damage the pad. Remember to inspect the inner face of the rear disc which is largely obscured by the back plate. Again I'm applying the same ceramic brake grease to the rear pads which means they won't seize up and likely spare the owner a set of rear brakes in the future. I refit the caliper, refit the securing bolt and nip it up and that's done. I now rotate the rear disc backwards to check for bind on the handbrake and if necessary adjust as required. However, it's all okay. I carry out a quick inspection of the rear spring and shock absorber and as everything is okay, I'll pop the wheel back on. We carry out exactly the same process for the other side as well. With all the brakes stripped, cleaned and lubricated and the wheels back on, I can talk them up to the manufacturer's specifications. Unlike the manufacturer's recommendations, I prefer to run the tyre pressure at 40 psi. I seem to get better efficiency from the car and it had no effect on the tyre wear overall. We're nearly done, just a quick stamp in the service book for a major service and we're plugging in LeafSpy and our diagnostic machine to check for any DTCs. 
That's it all completed, no DTCs, and the Nissan Leaf has a full bill of health. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and follow us on Twitter at Kate Phantom. And we'll see you again soon with another episode. Bye for now.